All right, welcome back. This is week 67 of the preparation. If you don't know, the preparation is a program primarily designed for young men as an alternative to college, the military, and a dead-end job. Like I said, I have gone through 67 weeks of this program now, and I've been able to accomplish quite a lot. In fact, if you want to see the most some of the more major accomplishments over the past year and three months. I'll leave it down in the description. So if you're interested in this program, uh, my email would be in the description as well. Uh, so you can reach out to me and I'll tell you more about it or help you get started as well. Because so far, I don't think there's a better alternative to this. I think this alternative should really be the primary path for the majority of people of course i don't think the majority of people are fit for it i think only only people who are driven are are gonna choose their own path and choose the preparation which guides you on your own path anyway this is week 67 and the week started off well i finally finished the the building part of a small project it took way too long and I could have gotten it done sooner but I finished it finally and that was the chicken tractor which my guess right now is that it'll be able to house 50 chickens who knows how many it'll actually be able to house but we can always subtract from that amount over time maybe move them somewhere else move some of them out of there if there's too many, if they get too crowded. But we'll start off with 50. Um, I finished all the framing of the chicken tractor a while ago, which if you don't know, the ch chicken tractor is designed to house a fair amount of chickens in it. You put it on a field, the chickens eat the grass. They also eat a little bit of grain but they also fertilize the land at the same time. So it benefits not just the chickens because they're pasture raised, but it also benefits the land because more nitrogen is placed onto the soil and eventually gets in the soil. So it benefits everything. But I finished the framing a while ago and now I got the chicken wire put up around the entire thing, as well as corrugated metal, corrugated metal sheets, which line most of the top and sides of it, just to provide protection from rain and sun uh, for the chickens. But the big objective now, which will be part of the major, uh, it'll be the main objective for this next week will be actually getting the chicks. I was in contact with a guy, I am in contact with a guy who has and sells double-breasted uh, broiler chicks, which is the type of chicken I want to raise, meat chickens. Uh, but he's been taking a while to actually get them. And uh, I don't want to wait around. I want to get this project running finally not just started but running um so this next week this upcoming week i'm gonna find out where we can buy some and hopefully we'll get the full 50 that i want we'll finally get it started we'll keep the chicks in i always forget what it's called i can't remember the name because i just think of it in spanish but the uh the coop there we go in the chicken coop for a little while um it's three to four weeks we'll probably just keep them in there for for four weeks once they gain all their feathers and then they can be kept outside more because they don't need the heat lamp um to protect them just keep them warm so probably keep them in the coop for four weeks once they gain those feathers and can regulate their own temperature we'll move them out to the chicken tractor and finally start using that thing and then 
from what I've heard, it's about 50 days from when you get them as a chick to when they're big enough to be sold. So 50 days, 30 chickens, sell each chicken for 25 to $30 because they're pasture raised. That's pretty good. It'll take a long time to process them, uh, butcher them and all that stuff. De-feathering, it'll take a while. Um, maybe a day or two, but with the profit that can be gained from that, from buying these chicks, the, the prices vary. And of course, being a foreigner here, uh, they want to scam you. But I've heard prices ranging from 60 pesos, 60 Uruguayan pesos, which is maybe a dollar twenty uh, in American dollars, to maybe a dollar ten, fifteen, to about 80, 81 Uruguayan pesos, which is more expensive, but. You know, that's the sort of thing that they're just chicks. They shouldn't be, they're not worth that much as chicks. So they shouldn't be that expensive. They really shouldn't be. So get that done. But the biggest part was building the thing, building the chicken tractor. And unless that thing falls apart sometime soon, for whatever reason, I think it's all done and it's good to go. That was a good way to start the week. Another big thing that started just recently, now that we're in spring and going into summer, uh, we have a lot more work with the cows. Um, and we started doing artificial inseminations this week. We have three bulls, so they do most of the work, but they can't service all of the cows. At least they usually don't. So last year we had quite a lot of cows to artificially inseminate. We spent the majority of a day uh, bring all the cows to the corral and artificially inseminating them. It took, it took a long time. Um, even with seven people, it took a long time. But this year, we, at least so far, we only had to artificially inseminate 60 cows, or about 60 cows. And with how many people was there? Four people this time. We got through 60 cows within an hour. Just an hour. Um, and that doesn't really count the, the amount of time that it took to to uh, bring them into the corral. But there's cattle dogs here, so it doesn't take that much time at all. And it's actually a very easy process. So getting that done in an hour is it's pretty good. From 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Not bad at all. And it reminded me of doing this last year when I was studying economics, basic economics. It reminded me of the principle, the economic principle of the division of labor. That when you have a group of people who have their own roles and they specialize in that role, they can have uh, at least a general concept or maybe a very good idea of how to do the other jobs within uh, whatever work they're doing. But they specialize in one form of work and when this group that specializes in their particular form of work works together, they streamline the process and are much more efficient. So last year when we were doing the artificial inseminations, there were seven of us working together to get through all these cows. We each had our own jobs, and because we stuck to it, we stuck to our own job, it was so much faster and more efficient than it would be if uh, we were all running around trying to do each other's jobs, trying to step in and do this thing or that thing. And that's not to say that you shouldn't take some time to learn how to do other things, other jobs, because it's good to know how to vaccinate cows. It's good to know how to treat cows. It's good to know how to just work with cows in general. But at 6.30 in the morning when everyone's tired, and there's only 60 cows to go through. Once you have your job and you know your job, it's easier and more pleasant for everyone if you just stick to that job and run through it fast. And that's how we were able to get through 60 in an hour.
which isn't bad. And that's at a slower pace. That's not us working fast. That's at a, a relatively steady pace. So that's, that's a good amount of time. But the division of labor, I, even even this time with so much less work and fewer people, I was able to notice it. And it's, uh, it's, it's a perfect example of why you need to study other things study basic economics so you understand how things work because otherwise without that idea at that basic principle without that understanding of that basic principle i wouldn't i wouldn't have noticed it i wouldn't have noticed how much smoother things went because because of just that that definition that definition that concept and the definition of the concept um it's strange how just little ideas can bring new things to light like that and can change our frame of the world in a positive way so that was good along with that what else did i do this week lots of mowing um our primary goal here on the farm it's not actually about raising the animals uh, and fattening them and uh, running our cow-calf operation the primary goal is actually increasing the quality and quantity of the soil when we first got here about three years ago the man running this place was working like a conventional farmer would at least a conventional uruguayan farmer would a lot of the time was spent on tractors and moving cows from place to place just big open swaths of land moving these cows in the big open areas where they're able to choose all the best grasses to eat so you get spots of overgrazed grass and spots of undergrazed grass and the whole place just looks like a mess. Doesn't look pretty. Um, and that is part of farming is when things look pretty, that's a good, it's a good sign. Um, it's not just about efficiency. So he'd move these things, these cows from big swath of land to big swath of land, not really caring about the quality or quantity of the soil. And, uh, there was lots of time spent on tractors spreading chemical fertilizer and seeds into the fields, which is also a thing conventional farmers do in the States. Because you think, well, if I throw more money into this, I'll get more out of it. But that's not actually the case. Since then, we don't use chemical fertilizer on our fields. We don't seed the fields which reduces our cost by tens of thousands of dollars. But the fields are actually, and the quality of the soil, the quality of the grass, is all so much better. I mean, I noticed the other day while um, I was on the tractor that I wasn't having to dodge as many rock formations, which is a good sign, a very good sign, because that means that the soil is growing enough, actually growing in quantity, that it's covering those rock formations that were just barely peeking up above the ground and uh, were things that you'd have to watch out for when mowing because when you hit those things with a mower, it sounds bad and you're damaging the mower because of it. So that was a good sign, but also the length of the grass and the stem density what it's called um, how many stems are coming up from the ground uh, has increased by a lot the height of the grass is so much higher than it used to be it looks so much better even though it's not that that deep green color that we used to have when the fields were uh, chemically fertilized it it's that natural grass that is coming back. This, this, the natural grass that is supposed to grow within this area that's coming back and improving everything. Uh, so that's a good sign. 
But yeah, lots of time was spent this week mowing the fields on the tractor. Definitely got a little bit more color and I'm burnt. Got pretty burnt this week. But uh, it's nice to be on tractors anyway. I remember a time when I didn't know how to drive a tractor. And uh, it's, it's one of those things that you can look back on when you learn a skill. It's nice to look back on a time when you didn't know it and go, huh. This thing isn't necessarily exciting to me anymore, like it was when I was first learning this, but I now have this skill that I can just get on this huge piece of machine machinery and run it and have no problems. It's, it's just a, a pleasant feeling. It really is. So I did that, uh, and that took up quite a bit of time. Also did the normal activities like chess, Spanish, and working out, but I I was so tired this week, this past week, I, I don't even understand why. Usually I get up, the first thing I do during the day is get up and work out at 6.30, but I just couldn't get myself up at that time this past week. It was strange how tired I was. So I didn't work out that much. I worked out three out of seven days this past week, when usually it's six out of seven. Spanish is going well. I was out in a city with my girlfriend yesterday, and so I had some opportunities to use my Spanish, even just to listen to Spanish. And I'm far from proficient in the language, but I can definitely understand a whole lot more and speak more than I used to, so that's a good sign. And chess, chess is going well. I I just fell below this this ranking, this level in chess. But this past week I did hit 1,100 ELO, which is a chess rating. Um, and it's not a great chess rating by any means, but I've been trying so long to make the jump from 1,000 to 1,100 ELO a long time. And I just hit it and then just fell below it. So I'll get back up there. Uh, I just had a series of poor games these past two days. So we'll see, we'll see. Um, but yeah, that was that was nice to finally hit that, that next benchmark there. Um, additional events for the week. I was on Collapse Life's podcast, which I don't know when the episode will come out, but <clears throat> I was on there to talk a little bit more about the preparation um, and answer any other questions that they had. But they're great people, very kind, and they asked difficult questions, which was nice. Along with that, I published one video here on YouTube and then wrote one article, which was the part two to not much time, and I'll leave those in the description as well. And uh, I enjoyed writing that. It was difficult, it's always difficult to write. Ernest Hemingway, he has a quote, I'm gonna paraphrase it, but it was something like, sometimes writing is incredibly easy, and other times it's like chipping away at rock. And that's, that's really what it is. Sometimes I sit down and I write and it's so smooth, so smooth. A couple hours goes by, no problem. Get each word out, get each sentence out, each paragraph. The ideas come easily. Then other times, it is like chipping away at rock. It's like, it's like standing there and digging a hole. It's just very tiring, tedious work. Absolutely. And this time, this this last article was, was one of those moments, but it was all right, I think. So I did that, did a fair amount of reading this week, and if you want to know what I've been reading, or you want to learn more about the preparation, uh, or just read these weekly updates instead, I'd recommend you check out the Substack page. Um, I think I'm a better writer sometimes than I am a speaker, so I think you might enjoy my writing a bit more. Anyway, that was week 
67, what I did this week for week 67. I say it every, every video, but it's hard to believe that 67 weeks have gone by. It's very strange. But uh, hopefully this next week is filled with more, at least minor accomplishments. Definitely want to get those chicks and get the chicken tra tractor broiler chicken operation going. So we'll see though. We'll see. I will see you guys next week and have a good day.